Whoa! Welcome to the Impact Play, impacting more than just gaming. Our focus is simply to make a positive impact that ranges out beyond just the gaming space and to bring positivity into a much clearer perspective. Be part of the live show Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Twitch.tv backslash the Impact Play or later on YouTube or even on your favorite podcast platform such as Apple Podcast, Overcast, Google Podcast, Pandora, and so much more. Just simply type in the Impact Play. Moving forward, we are diversifying the show and putting the spotlight on people of color, video game developers, content creators, and overall people of impact. If you know someone that you believe would be a perfect candidate to make a guest appearance on the show, reach out to us on social or even by sending us an email to contact at theimpactplay.com. I am your show, It's Yaku. This is special episode 63. On the agenda, we will, we will be discussing a whole lot of news that just couldn't wait uh, regarding the PlayStation 5 showcase, another Nintendo Direct Mini showcase focused around partners, and the mess around the PS5 pre-orders, and so much more. So lately, I've been focusing, I've been focusing less on Diabolical, even though it's a nice arena um, first-person shooter type game. Even though it's fine, it was just too, I guess, a little too hectic for me because I'm not uh, a PC player. I'm not a keyboard and mouse player uh, at first because I'm still a hybrid between keyboard and mouse and controller. So what I have been playing a lot more of is Call of Duty Mobile. And I've kind of, uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't a stream on my personal channel uh, last night due to me fi- trying to figure it, uh, figure it out. But I've gone ahead and downloaded, what's the name of this program? I'll tell you right now. It's called Visor, V-Y-S-O-R, but uh, it does not. Uh, for the free edition, it does not uh, input or should I say output audio from your phone to the PC, and it is so low quality. It's worse than 480p. So I'm going to go ahead and start using that tomorrow, but I'm going to go ahead and start subscribing to the premium version. It's not a advertisement. It's just me trying out new technologies. If you have something else that you'd like to suggest, let me know in chat or let me know in Discord. And I now I will appreciate it. Uh, what how what else have I been playing lately? That's about it. I've gone ahead and I know uh, Game Pass Ultimate is is now live on Android devices, and you could start streaming games to your Android device. But some of these games are touch based, so you do not need a controller. I've gone ahead and played around with Minecraft Dungeons. The controls are okay, but there is uh, but they were a little kinky, meaning that when I was moving around, it was smooth, but I guess attacking. With the um, was it exactly like you were playing uh, uh, on a console experience? So I was on the cloud, so it would be I guess that now it wasn't the lag that was getting to me, it was just the controls. And then uh, what else? There's also like uh, a moment or two where the controls like didn't work right away. I went and uh, FYI, I was on I wireless network. I wasn't using 4G. And yeah, that's pretty much my first-hand experience on that. I will experiment more with it, and I'll give you guys my further analysis of it. And let's see, looking forward to... I know a lot of... Um, um, I guess it's not in regards to games, but in regards to entertainment as a whole. A lot of uh, movies have been delayed, and then the most notorious one is, I believe... I don't know if Wonder Woman 1984 was delayed. I wasn't much sure about that. Uh... If I am, uh, if I'm wrong on that, let me know, and I will correct myself later on, and I've uh, on a on the next episode, and also uh, Natasha Romanoff's movie, uh, Black Widow, has been delayed. I don't know if it's been official or it's been rumored to be delayed again. It's because of COVID and working, trying to be safe as much as best as I could, and I know a lot of theaters have started reopening, but with social distancing orders in place, which is great. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. I haven't missed movies lately. I will, hopefully, soon. 
And then I know there's one movie I want to see, which is New Mutants. I am a Marvel comic book type fan. So regardless if it's Marvel or not, Marvel, DC, and I know TMNT are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I guess not a true sequel, but it's out now. So hopefully that's on my radar as well. So that's about it in regards to the games and what I'm looking forward to in general. So now we'll move on to the gaming news. So we will begin, of course, with the, uh, the hot topic is the PlayStation 5 Showcase. Okay, so first we know the price for the uh, all digital and for the disc model. So the digital is starting is at three ninety nine, and the disc is at four ninety nine. So we knew that uh, they're they're, uh, they're taking a little bit of a loss. So it was rumored that the disc uh, version of it will be a, a will cost only about four hundred fifty dollars, which was rumored months ago. But they couldn't, I guess, uh, increase their price in re- in compared to Microsoft's Xbox Series X, so they had to match it. But what was surprising was uh, the digital was at three ninety nine. So I, I was expecting around four fifty. Three ninety nine was like the lowest I, I would see it as, and I was surprised there's a hundred dollar difference in between them. Okay, uh, let's see what do we got here. So the PS5 launch date is November 12th, and it's specifically for the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. And with all other regions of the world getting the console on November 19th, and including China. And what's surprising is that I guess Microsoft, I don't know if they did that or not. Uh, Don't quote me on this just yet, because I wasn't there fully. Uh, That Microsoft uh, Xbox, I don't know which version of it, whether it it be the Xbox One or the 360. But one of them, one of their consoles didn't launch fully globally. Like, they were in increments. But they got a lot of hate on that. But what I'm seeing with Sony, everything that Microsoft did or is doing... Sony is either getting a pass, it's great, or they just uh, like oh they give it they um they not they don't disregard it, but it's like oh okay interesting. So that is my only thing that I don't that I am comp- um not venting, but I'm comparing to Microsoft because this is a discussion. So I'm just giving you my perspective, my the way I'm seeing it. So, uh, we'll go into that later, but I guess we'll f- uh, focus uh, right now on what was revealed. So, Sony held back on announcing any launch exclusives during the actual presentation once again. And then what was the one thing that th- the presentation raised more questions than answered. That was answered later on on Twitter, on social media, via Jeff Keighley and other, other uh, high-end people. Which is, which which they could have easily put that all in in within their presentation. They were answered moments later, afterwards, but they could have easily done that within that presentation. Microsoft didn't actually do a presentation because it was leaked previously, but they did announce everything in increments. So nothing was like left unanswered. They obviously. They uh, put everything up on Twitter, on social, but in increments. So, for instance, like they didn't just announce the price and just uh, leave us guessing. We didn't fi- we didn't ha- we didn't have to find out from other sources, so to speak. We found out straight from Microsoft and Xbox. But Sony, we have to, we had to find it from other people. But there's no comparison from there. All the hate that Microsoft got, Sony is not getting anything at all. There's no comparison, no nothing. Okay, uh, so what was highlighted was Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is coming to both the PS4 and PS5 at launch. And the standard edition will be $50, which is weird because 
it's like a 10 hour game and it's like it's more along the line of a dlc so 50 dollars for a dlc which is like weird and on top of that uh there there is an ultimate edition that is going for 70 dollars and that includes both the original game as well as the miles morales but which is weird so it's like 20 dollars for the spider-man 4 which is alone is like a full game so it's like so it, it seems as though microsoft uh, not microsoft i'm sorry sony is charging you way more for a smaller game which is like weird even though listen i know i'm i'm just comparing saying i'm giving my viewpoints of it but regardless of the fact i'm still getting the play i'm still uh being uh not i wasn't sold on the playstation 5 but regardless, I'm still get, I'm still uh, in, being invested in the PlayStation ecosystem, nonetheless. So I didn't exactly sell me as to why I should get a PlayStation Five as a as a person that has not played or was invested in the PlayStation platform as a console, so to speak. So. In regards to that, we did get a look at uh, Harry Potter. It was finally revealed, which is coming in 2021. And we did also get Resident Evil Village. Uh, an, an, an announcement of Devil May Cry 5. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then other games called Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is getting some PlayStation exclusive content. Deathloop. Odd World, Soulstorm, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and Fortnite, what have you. Okay, and we also did get PlayStation Plus Collection. And what I did put on Twitter I, uh, originally after the presentation is that the PlayStation Plus Collection, they didn't it raise so many questions that weren't answered. You just show PlayStation Plus Collection, you have access to all these games. And my understanding of it is... That with the collection or PS Plus collection, is I know it's an extension. And I know now that the, uh, it's an extension of your current PlayStation Plus subscription service, and it will be available. Hold on, uh, uh, will come with a number of PlayStation Four titles that will be available at launch. So my understanding of, of it originally was that there, uh, you'll. Be stuck behind the paywall in order to play these games, these old PlayStation 4 games, which is like weird. Like, why would they? Why would they do that? So they're really screwing consumers over. But I uh, ended up getting a clarification later on that no, you're not. Even though you could uh, have these games either physical, digital, and you still have access to them. You can even purchase them separately, regardless. So it's just an extension of, I guess it's. Uh, for it's uh, focusing on new consumers, or should I say, new PlayStation players to the platform. So you have access. You don't even have to buy any games. You have all you need is a PlayStation Plus subscri subscription, which is ninety nine ninety nine a month or sixty dollars a year, which is like half off essentially. So and then you have on top of that, you have access to all. Um, all, I'm not going to say all of the PlayStation 4 library, but the top uh, PlayStation 4 titles within that library. You'll have access to those. It's not a direct... What's that word I'm looking for? It's not a direct... Uh, I'm looking for that word. What's that word? It's not a, a comparison to Xbox's Game Pass. It's not PlayStation's answer to to Xbox's Game Pass. That's the word I was looking for. So it's just a start, so to speak, to get you invested more into the PlayStation ecosystem. Because you, all you have to pay is nine ninety nine a month, and you have access to all these games. So it is. See, with Game Pass um, Ultimate competition. It's better for us as consumers, whether it be from Microsoft, Nintendo, Xbox. Google Stadia, even Amazon Game Studio, whatever they're working on. It's great for us as consumers. We win in the end. It makes competition within um, within these companies 
allows them to innovate and bring us even more content, even more games, even allow uh, uh, it brings even more value to our dollar. So we vote with our money, with our wallets. But these companies, they want to get, get as much of your money as possible. So what do they have to do to do that? Innovate, bring even more amazing value, more amazing titles. And this is a great answer. It's not a direct uh, it's not a direct answer to Game Pass, but it's a start. It's getting somewhere. It's to get you invested more into their into their ecosystem or their consoles, so to speak. Because both companies, I would say they've won this generation uh, simply because they have two different business models. Microsoft, or should I say, yeah, Microsoft is focusing on subscriptions, not on, and very less on consoles, on hardware. Uh, but Sony is f uh, focusing more on games. That's what they, they did with this latest showcase. They showed a lot of games. And a little, a little of gameplay demo, a little, a little of gameplay. But with Microsoft, they said their main star of every, uh, I guess, announcement or showcase this year was about revolving around Game Pass. And and with the launch of uh, cloud gaming being integrated into uh, Xbox Game Pass, this way you get more value out of your dollars, which is great. <clears throat> Okay, and then you have other Logitech exclusives. You have Destruction All Stars, Psych Boys, Psych Boy, A Big Adventure, and Ashes Play Room. Uh, and some of these titles will be available on PS4. And then we also got pricing for the DualSense controller is at $69.99. The Pulse 3D wireless headset is at $99.99. The camera is at $59. The remote is at $29. And the charging station is also at $29. Also, another thing uh, uh, to note is that all, I guess, first-party games from PlayStation Game Studios will, excuse me, will be uh, at sixty-nine ninety-nine, not fifty-nine as uh, as uh, last generation. So the prices are going up, which is not surprising. But what was surprising is that all uh, that was Sony uh, that said that all of the first game, all all of the first-party studios will be will be having that price hike and we'll be implementing that price hike but uh, what i've noticed is before is we got ea and we got a, i guess maybe a one or two companies that announced an increase but others aren't following suit so yeah it's not surprising uh, uh, in the end Okay, da -da 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 -da. we talked about that. What else did we not talk about? And they've actually announced like the, um, more of the hardware specifications on the on the PlayStation blog. If you guys want to check that out, for both the wire dual sense wireless controller as well as the PlayStation Five. Okay. And also on launch day, we have Demon Souls. I think we said that. Uh, Destruction VC. Yeah, we said all this. Yeah, we only have a couple of launch day games. Okay, let's see what else do we got. But with me, I'm not going to get it exactly on launch day because a lot of these games are going to be available on PS4, even for next generation, regardless on whether it be Xbox or PlayStation. None of these games actually take advantage of these hardware, and and with in twenty twenty, a lot of these games are cross generation, and what I'm what and what people were saying about Xbox when they announced that that the first two years is going to be cross generation, it's going to be across the Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series X and S. So you're gonna it's going to be on the previous generation as well as the next generation, but they got a lot of hate on that. Why? Because oh, uh, people were speculating, oh, that uh, it's gonna be a lot of games are gonna be held, so, uh, quote unquote, held back in development. Uh, they won't be available. Uh, they won't be uh, able to take full uh, advantage of the latest hardware. It's because they're gonna be running on old hardware. First and foremost, we're, uh, 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 with taking 
not taking into account PlayStation or the PlayStation Xbox comparison, but PC has been doing that for years. We have 1080, we have 2070, and now we have 3080, and we even have AMD GPUs. So we have different specs that games have been that game developers have been working on for ye working on for all these different specifications, regardless. So, and all these games that are on console are being developed and tested on PC first, and then they're uh, they're being uh, they're be they're being ported out, I guess, or being or should I say, what's that word? Uh, regardless of the fact that they're later being brought to console. So they're first being developed on PC. Even with all these uh, gameplay that was announced in the PlayStation 5 showcase, they were, <clears throat> they are, it is actual PC gameplay that has been optimized as PlayStation 5 gameplay, but it is still play, P PC gameplay. Word for, word for thought. Okay, let's see. We talked about that. Also, Call of Duty Cold War. Uh, PlayStation 4 owners have access to the alpha starting tomorrow, actually, as of this recording. So, September 18th through the 20th. All PlayStation 4 owners can get a taste of the next, gener next generation of global combat this weekend. Details to follow, including maps and modes. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Just under two months before the release of the direct sequel to the original Call of Duty Black Ops and mere weeks ahead of the game's beta, all P PS4 owners will be able to participate in the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Alpha. This exclusive weekend commences on September 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So three hours ahead is 11, 12, 1, 1 a.m. Eastern for all you guys listening in, the, in uh, Atlanta or should I say my main audience. Our main audience is set to conclude on September 20th. The alpha is free to install uh, to all PS4 players, PS Plus subscriptions that are required for most owners. Okay, it's about 25 gigs. Preloading is planned to launch tomorrow. And yeah, so I guess Sony is still having a deal with Call of Duty. But with in regards to the Call of Duty League, uh, their deal expired. So that's why the Call of Duty League is there, I guess, for next year. They won't be uh, playing on PlayStation consoles. Instead, they'll be playing on PC with controllers. But the controllers have to be... Uh, what's that word? Uh, they have a list of certain controllers to choose from. And they have to choose from that list. But yeah. They have a, a little, uh, a li the players have a little more leeway than they did previously. Okay, I'm not going to go into exact details, but yeah. But let's go into their Twitter, there was an I know we already said that. And next we have everything announced in the Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Nintendo has presented a brand new uh, Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase that features such games a game such as Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2. Rings of Ruin. Uh, we have a breakdown. We have a breakdown, okay? Monster Hunter Rise will be released on the Switch uh, next year on March 26, 2021. If you, uh, we're not going to go into exact details. We're going to just summarize it for you all. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin will arrive on the summer of 2021. We don't have an exact date. And Capcom has also confirmed that there will be compatibility of some kind with Monster Hunter Rise. Ori and the World of the Wisps is headed to the Nintendo Switch. I see it should be available now. Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's, av it's available now. Which It is a great game. We have Fitness, Boxing 2, Rhythm Exercise, which punches way to Switch this December. We have this Gear 6, Defiance of Destiny. It's coming to the Nintendo Switch exclusively in September, I'm sorry, summer of 2021. 
it's a special game trial event between September 23rd to the 29th. So you can play like a demo, I guess. Also, we got Balan Wonder World. Brings a wondrous adventure to Switch next year. Embark on an adventure this game from legendary creators Yuji Naka and Nayoto Oshima. Done. Over 80 costumes and wield a variety of abilities across 12 dreamlike stages. Rune Factory 5 will be released on tw in 2021. It's an RPG and yeah. L long dark winter mute story mode. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a survival type game. Then we have Hades. Arrives on Nintendo Switch later uh, today, actually. Empire of Sin brings a new strategy game. It's coming December of December, yeah, December first. Sniper Elite Four is coming uh, this holiday, and that's all we have. And now we'll go into the mess in regards to next uh, PlayStation Five pre-orders and. Uh, and and the Nintendo uh, Nvidia's RTX 3080. So after the showcase, yeah, uh, last night, a PlayStation said later on that retailers will ha uh, will start pre-orders as early as today. But what the where it got even messy was a lot of retailers uh, uh, allowed pre-orders as soon as the showcase ended so a lot of people were able to pre-order their ps5 as of yesterday so that was a complete mess they they originally said that oh won't be a surprise you guys uh consumers will have, will have a lot of time to pre-order and so on but that was far from it all the pre-order was a complete and utter mess even though I didn't pre-order, like I said, I'm not gonna pre-order. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have the PS5 later on in the spring and the summer because nothing really is coming out. And next generation games will be will be will not be able to take full advantage of the hardware at least a year or two in to the launch of the next generation console. So that's why I'm not worried about it. And a lot of these games are gonna be available on previous generation or the current generation, I should say. And on top of that, NVIDIA's RTX 3080 was also launched today, and they all and uh, they are already sold out. And the majority of of them was due to bots buying out these graphics, these graphic cards, and they're being sold as high as ten thousand dollars on eBay or in other third market third market res, uh, reselling marketplaces. Which is crazy. So Amazon, Newegg, Best Buy, Nvidia's own website, out of stock. Even what I noticed in, even what I've noticed, like for instance, if you wanted to access Best Buy site, it was like you were not able to access that site at all. I don't know if you can now, but because of the PlayStation Five pre-order fiasco, you are unable to access that site regardless, even if you weren't gonna pre-order a console. And even in stores. Uh, the the average was ten consoles per location, so a lot of people were not unable to order a console, or I should I say pre-order one, and there was huge lines, and uh, like in micro centers, Best Buys, just for the just for the graphic cards, the thirty eighties. So let's move on to the next couple of news stories for you guys all. Ubisoft is making Assassin's Creed as well as Spencer Cell Titus available for, available for the Oculus. So VR is getting Assassin's Creed titles as well as Splinter Cell titles. So we're not getting a true Splinter Cell title. Like, what the heck is going on with Ubisoft? Like, we're not getting Splinter Cell at all. We're getting uh, Sam Fisher appearances and mobile games and... Rainbow Six Siege and what have you, but we're not getting a full-on game based around him. So, what's going on? <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's great that we're getting it, we're getting it, that VR is getting a lot of these games, 
But we, I feel like with VR, VR is, is such a niche experience in gaming, but I feel like it's not really there. I've played VR, which is such a great experience now, but it's not at its greatest potential just yet. I feel like it could go even further beyond. As a, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched a sort uh, SAO or Sword Art Online anime, where they just put the headset on and they're like actually in that world. You can move and what have you, Th like that. Or player ready one. That is, that's. I feel like we're gonna have true VR, but that we're a long way, we're a long ways away from from that experience. But none, nonetheless, I am excited for it. And regarding of uh, Nintendo 3DS has been discontinued, which is took long enough because we're actually in the Nintendo Switch era. Oh, and regards, oh, also in regards to the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo <laughs> actually uh, they officially uh, confirmed that they're working on a, I guess a next, a, a new, I guess iteration of the Nintendo Switch, but. <laughs> The funny thing is that they said that it's going to be available sometime this century. Of course, we're not going to sometime this century. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't understand how far, like, like they would go to, I guess, go as far as a, an official confirmation as possible. Like, they were so generic. They weren't specific at all. Like, we know we're getting a new console. There has been rumors coming on and off in regards to a Nintendo, a Nintendo Switch 2 or a Nintendo Switch Pro. And especially in regards to 4K and what have you. But still. <laughs> like, come on. Officially, that's officially confirmed this. That's what Xbox did in regards to the Xbox Series S. We knew that was coming on months before. And... They if it went they went out of the way to officially confirm it, <laughs> but with Nintendo it's the complete opposite. Like we know it's there, we know it's coming. Announced the thing, and Mario Kart Tour has more than doubled. Oh, did we we talked about this? I believe uh, the, it has more than doubled the user base to two hundred million, which is of course. Oh no, I thought I I no no I discussed this on Twitter. I'm sorry, I didn't discuss this on the podcast on the on the live show. That it's. That's surprising in regards to COVID and everybody, uh, everybody being indoors and like uh, being limited to uh, be uh, moving outdoors. So a lot of people are buying out these consoles, and all these consoles are being sold out. And just recently, they're being made more readily available instead of being completely sold out. So a lot of these gamers, or should I say, newer gamers are playing or being indoors. And on top of that, Mario Kart Tour is doing like I guess cross generation exclusive. So if you like for instance if you pre order the that new Nintendo Mario game is coming out tomorrow, the three D S the three D All Stars, you you get there is an a, a cup or an, an event in regard to that uh cart Mario Kart Tour app on the phone. So that on top of it, which is not surprising at all. And then on top of that, you need a, a Nintendo account to sign up. So it is their game. So you have to have a Nintendo account to be able to use that game. Which is common sense. <laughs> What's this? Facebook is discontinuing the Oculus Rift S. The new Quest S can connect to a PC... Uh, I'm not gonna really go into, go into it because I'm not really, I don't really know that much about VR. Uh, what's this? Oh, this is about the prices. Okay, Sprint to Cell, we talked about him. We talked about cloud streaming and that 150 Xbox Game uh, Pass Ultimate titles are being are available as well, and more are being added. That was this uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two has sold over one million units, which is great. I even have that here somewhere. 
it's unopened because it's for a PS4. I received this from Gamertag Video. A big shout out to them. But yeah, I haven't touched it because I don't have a PS4 just yet. But I'm going to regardless because I am in I am in the industry. I uh, I'm more of a journalist, or should I say, yeah, I'm more of a journalist. So yeah, I am a part of the industry. So it is my job to know about these titles to to experience to experience all these different platforms whether whether it be my xbox playstation nintendo what have you uh nvidia acquires arm for 40 billion dollars uh graphics card giant nvidia has acquired uk semiconductor firm arm for 40 billion we know about that that's about it we don't need to go into this further the Oculus Quest 2 accidentally leaks a new processor on an, an, an almost 4K display. Two presentations for the Oculus Quest 2 has appeared this morning. Wait, when was this thing published? Three days ago. On Facebook, uh, the video lists several key specs. Almost 2K pixels per eye, 50% increased, 6, 6 gigabytes of RAM, a 2 gigabyte increase from the first Oculus Quest. A Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 processor, improves controller, a Gronomic 64 gigs or 250 gig gigabytes of storage. No official confirmation, of course, because it's a leak, so we don't know for sure. And let's see. Facebook is continuing its Oculus Rift S. Facebook is backing away from PC about VR entirely. Quietly announced announcing during Facebook Connect that it will no longer develop PC-only VR hardware. The company explains that it sees the future of VR as a standalone device, like it's freshly announced Oculus Quest 2, rather than through devices 2 and powered by PCs. Because of this, Facebook now plans to end sales of its current flagship PSVR headset, the Oculus Rift S in 2021. This all might be concerning to developers that have poured time and money into developing for PC VR, but with while its support for the hardware is ending, Facebook says it plans to support the Rift platform and launch high-end PC VR games well into the future. Likely to help alleviate these concerns, Facebook also announced that its Oculus Lift Tech will exit beta this fall and allow Quest users to connect the headset to their PCs and play games originally developed for the Oculus Rift line. And part from that, as part from that, an update heading to the Quest next year will merge the two game libraries into the Quest UI and allow both standalone VR and PC VR games to coexist into the game's interface. Over the past year, we've heard from developers in the VR community alike that the Quest del uh, delivers on the promise of VR better than any other headset. Re uh, reads a blog post from Facebook. It offers flexibility and comfort while allowing people to enjoy both wireless Quest titles and the best of high-powered PC VR through Oculus Sling, all with a single all-in-one headset. This is the future of VR. Exactly what I just said before. That is the true future of VR without being tethered, uh, or should I say, uh, anchored to a PC. So we're literally just not even breaking that ceiling of VR, of true VR, where VR can lead, VR can truly take us. So I think that's about it. Uh, if let me see if there's any last minute. Actually, there was. In the last minute news titles. Let me see. I know I saw a couple on Instagram. Let me. Let me oh yeah, <laughs> Xbox uh, posted this on Twitter earlier. Pre-order September twenty second. Worldwide launch in thirty six countries. November. Excuse me. November tenth. Hype over nine thousand. Don't worry. We'll let you know the exact time pre-orders start for uh for you soon. This is a direct answer to PlayStation's heck. Uh, I guess, mess of a pre-order launch. <laughs> okay, let's see. I know there is a couple of things. Let me just make, see if I can find that. Okay, so apparently we're getting two more Joker films. 
Uh, Jack Juan Phoenix has reportedly been offered $50 million for two more Joker sequels, which is not surprising. Uh, let's see. I know I saw something. Where'd it go? And I have to scroll through it. I like, had it saved, but then when it, it auto, when it refreshes, it just it, it goes up instead of being done manually. Like asking me to scroll back up to the latest news stories, but that's fine. I'll find it in time. Okay, Sony said there will be more PS5s available at launch than the PS4 on day one. What's this? Tnet? Tickets on sale now at AMC. And guys, uh, this year, be sure to vote. Make sure you register. You could even request a mail-in ballot. You know, so you don't have to go physically out there to vote. And even though um, there's, I guess, delays with the post office, you don't have to mail it back with the post office as soon as you're done voting. You can drop it off in any registrar office near you. So it's, uh, please use your right and go out there to vote. If you're not registered, register today and do not delay. Let's see. Call of Duty, we talked about that. Yeah, voting. Even Twitch is discussing voting. And then let us know your experiences of pre-ordering the PS5. If you were able to, if you weren't able to, if your pre-order got canceled, whatever it is, let us know. Let us know in Discord. Let us know by sending us a sending us reader mail or a voice note over at anchor.fm backslash impact play. And who knows, it may even be featured on a future episode of the of the show. Okay, we have oh here it is. 99% of PS4 games will be playable on PS5. So that is still the reason why I'm getting a PS4 instead of going instead of going full on PS5 because there may be certain titles that I may I may I may enjoy that will not be available on the PS5. So with the PS5, I'm going to get the old digital edition, but not at launch. So more along the spring or maybe summer of next year. Oh, here it is. Warner Brothers confirmed production on the Batman has resumed in the UK following Robert. Pinson's alleged COVID-19 quarantine. I think this is the man, Batman movie or the game. Let me find out. I thought this was the game. Oh yeah, it was. It was the movie. Okay, I thought it was the game. That's why I wanted. That's why I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Since the gracious multiplayer is shutting down only a few months after launch. Just looking this further. Okay. Xbox Series X, Series S pre-orders open uh, September 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those of you interested. And the PS5 will be back with Kabato with PS3, PS2, and PS1 games. We know that already because the only thing they said is going to be backwards compatible with PS4 games. And then what I'm believing is the reason why it's like a fully compatible with the, all the way through PS1 is because of hardware. Because uh, there, uh, between the PS3, PS2, PS1, and even the PS4, uh, they are different chipsets and what have you. So that is what. Limit uh, uh, what has limited the PS5 to be fully, fully, fully backwards compatible to the first generation. Budget cuts comes to PSVR on September 25th and will include full Japanese voices and in game textures. There is a Hyperbole tournament on October 20th on the PS4. It's a 2v2 intergalactic sports action tournament type thing. If anyone's interested, be sure to check that out. And the funny thing at the end of the PlayStation 5 showcase was Fortnite. It's going to be available at launch. Like, of course it is. It's Fortnite. <laughs> it's going to be available at launch at, at any platform regardless. <laughs> They're always there. Because <laughs> everything is cross-platform. <laughs> so I don't know why they had the gun and announced it, I guess, to fill time or what have you. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything else that's new. Actually, hold on. 
there was something I remember uh, in regards to Fortnite. Epic, not, not Epic, Apple has got ahead and I think they're, blo I don't know if they're blocking. Hold on, let me look that up real quick before I just read off the top of my head. Uh, Fortnite Mac. Okay, let's go to news stories. Okay, here it is. Fortnite will no longer receive updates on Mac. Fortnite, including both the Battle Royale and Save the World modes, is no longer receiving updates on Mac computers. Epic Games said, said that Apple is allowing it to push updates to the platform. Apple is preventing Epic from signing games and patches for distribution on Mac, which ends our ability to develop and offer Fortnite Save the World for the platform, Epic Games said in a post on their official site. Specifically, our upcoming V. Uh, 14.20 release will cause bugs for players on version 13.40, resulting in a very poor experience. Since we are no longer able to sign updates and release fixes for these issues beginning September 23rd, 2020, Fortnite Save the World will no longer, longer be available. Uh, okay, Fortnite's Battle Royale will, mode will still be available on Mac devices, but Apple said it will, it will no longer receive version updates due to Apple's actions. So... If this was between Apple, I'm sorry, uh, Epic and uh, Epic Fortnite, Epic's Fortnite on iOS. So what does this have to do with Mac? So Apple is definitely being, like I said this before, they're being like a little child. And they're going out and and crying and whatever. And they said no, they're going to block Epic completely from all of their platforms. Even though this has nothing to do with it at all. Even though the only... The only they're just like a child. That's all it is. That's all I'm seeing from them. They're making a, like a little baby, essentially, without uh, pu pu uh, putting it blightly. That come on. This is between iOS and Fortnite. Simple. And then just because Epic went out of the way to, uh, they did an antitrust uh, lawsuit against them because of the iOS platform, not because of the of Apple. It's Apple in its entirety. So, I have no other words for them. I'm just shaking my head. Like, come on. But, yeah. Uh, let's see. It says Degration. The sci fi shooter from Halo co creator Marcus Leto is losing all its multiplayer modes over the next few months. The studio has already moved the in-game store where players could purchase cosmetics. But yeah. Sadly. Let's see if there's anything else. And then we're going to go ahead and check reader mail as well. And if you guys want to submit your reader mail, be sure to do so now. Either in chat on our on anchor.fm backslash the impact play, leaving a voice note. Or by sending us an email at readermail at the Okay, uh, here is a tweet from IGN Deals three hours ago. At 9 a.m. Pacific Eastern, Walmart will have PS5 orders available again. So if you guys want to order either, either, P either PS5 edition, be sure to do so. Here's a nice little thing. Game Developers of Color Expo 2020 is happening this weekend. This Friday, join us at 1 p.m. Pacific Eastern for our first ever Direct, a video sh showcase featuring new content from upcoming games by creators of color. Set a reminder on YouTube to, uh, to hear when it's live. I'll share that in chat. And I'll be sure to include that in the show notes. See Fortnite in a whole new light. Today, PC players can enable ray tracing in NVIDIA DLSS if you use supported NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU cards and DirectX 12. So we'll go ahead and go on this blog, on the Fortnite blog. What is ray tracing? We know about that. We know what ray tracing is. Okay, minimum requirements. DirectX 12, CPU 4 cores or more. NVIDIA GX RTX 2060 or higher, updated drivers, Windows 10 version 1903 or higher, recommended system requirements is RTX X12, 8 cores or more, NVIDIA G RTX 2080 or higher, 
and yeah, it's the same Windows version, Windows 10 version 1903. So I do have a 2070 Super, so I may be good on that. So you could easily turn ray tracing in the settings. And you have to install a V455 driver to take full advantage. And let me check reader mail. Nope, nothing here. Now let's check Discord if we have anything. Yeah, I'm not seeing any reader mail. Okay, we're also doing we're also doing something new within the podcast, within the, the live show, and within YouTube. We are highlighting an amazing creator on the show that go above and beyond to innovate, hack, or even repurpose items that revolve around video games, gaming, and what have you. If you wish to be featured, be sure to contact us via Discord or even via email at creator spotlight at theimpactplay.com. So that is our new, that is a new, I guess, uh, something new that we're, work, that we're focusing on within the, within the Impact Play. So if you want to be featured or you have someone that uh, you want us to feature them, send us an email, Discord, or just contact us. And we'll look into it. And we'll, uh, we'll look into it further and, and have them featured on the show. So I guess we're going to end this here. But before we do, I said this again on Sunday, but I will say it, say this say this once more. I want to give a huge shout out to first and foremost Gary V for enticing me to go ahead and start this podcast. I don't know what prevented me from starting this. I could have started this earlier. I uh, I started this back in November of 2019, but for some reason I it wasn't just I needed the best equipment. Or I don't know what it was. Or just I was just being lazy. I don't know what what was preventing me from doing this sooner. But Gary, listening to Gary V constantly bashing me to go ahead and go out there and just start it. So go ahead and start your podcast. You could start. I started literally from my phone without an external mic or what have you. Just go and listen to episode one, and you'll and you'll hear the difference. So you don't need the best equipment. Just go out there and start. And another huge shout out to Gamer Tag Radio. They they guided us to where this podcast is now. Uh, with Gary V, I I know I wanted to start a podcast. I know I wanted to uh, go ahead and motivate others to make an impact, but I just didn't know where to go. With Gamer Tag Radio, listening to them constantly, I knew that I wanted to focus around gaming, but not just uh, around gaming specifically, but gaming at its core. So thank you both to Gamer Tech Radio and Gary V for uh, for the for making the impact play for w- where it is today. So thank you guys so much for making the impact play a part of your day. Be sure to join the Discord and be a part of ever growing community where we are more than just a community. We are a family. You can pay you can be a part of the live show by leaving a voice note over at anchor at the FM backslash the impact play. Leave us a review or even a rating on your favorite platform. Have a great one. Until next time, folks.